Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my celiac story, my diagnosis, and how I'm doing now. So, for the longest time, probably since I was about, I don't know, like, 17 I started noticing that I was getting like excruciating abdominal pain I was freaking out because my dad had Crohn's and my dad didn't know he had Crohn's because he was adopted he didn't find out till it was like early mid 30s so for the longest time I thought it was Crohn's and um, I actually was scheduled for a colonoscopy the day before my 19th birthday but I ended up canceling it because I didn't want to be groggy and stuff on my 19th birthday so I ended up canceling it back in August of 2016 I actually went to the emergency room because I could not face the pain it was so unbearable so I went to the emergency room and I told them I said my dad has Crohn's I want to get a colonoscopy to see if it's Crohn's because I don't know what is going on with me Instead, they gave me x-rays, which the only way to find out if you have Crohn's is through colonoscopy, so x-rays didn't show anything. So I was a little upset about that, and um, I was talking to my doctor. I told her, I said, my dad has Crohn's, I want to get tested for a colonoscopy. This was a couple weeks after I had went to the emergency room. But I'm on TRICARE, TRICARE Prime actually, so, um, me having it is only 33% chance because I would inherit from my dad, which is only 33% chance, which to me is like fairly high. I should get tested for it. But she didn't think that 33% chance was high enough to waste government money if it came back fine. So, I just ignored the pain because I didn't know what else it would it could be. But then I started becoming more educated about celiac. And no one in my family has celiac that I know of. Like I said, my dad's adopted, so maybe someone on his side of the family had it. But as of right now, like I don't know anyone in my family that has celiac. So um, July 2017, I actually went home to my parents for a week. And I am a huge ice cream fanatic. I will always eat ice cream. And um, when I started becoming more informed about celiac and lactose, I thought, okay, I'm one of those things. And so my husband was dropping me off at my parents' house one night, and we stopped and I got like a little pint of the Haagen-Dazs vanilla ice cream. And I ate that whole thing in one sitting while watching a movie or whatever. And like an hour passed by and my stomach felt fine. Like that, there was no pain. So then, like, a little bit after that, my mom made me a grilled cheese sandwich. And even though there was dairy on it, the ice cream hadn't made me feel sick or anything. But that grilled cheese sandwich made me feel so sick. Like, I was in so much pain, and I thought, okay, it's got to be the gluten in the bread. So it's got to be celiac. So when I went home, well, when I went back to North Carolina... Uh, I scheduled an appointment with my PCM and I told her, I said, I want to get tested for celiac. So, um, again, she was hesitant, which I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan of my PCM because of this. And I guess a lot of other military spouses have had not good things to say about her and have switched, but whatever, that's a different story. But she, again, didn't want to test me for celiac. And I was very, very adamant. I said, I need to get tested for celiac because I didn't know what else it could be. And I um, had eaten a small can of chicken noodle soup like the day before. So there was enough in my system for any type of blood test for celiac to come back positive. So she took the blood test and about two weeks later, the clinic called me and said that my test had came back positive. So I kind of had a little bit of 
like relief like finally I know what's going on with my body but I was pissed that I had celiac because that literally changed my whole diet and like the plans that I had for the future and everything so I was a little bit upset about it but obviously I can't do anything to change it I just have to accept it which I'm still having a hard time accepting it but anyways so after they had called me I had to schedule another appointment to go back in for like a follow-up so when I went in I had told her I wanted to get a biopsy or an upper endoscopy because my mother-in-law was told that she had celiac for like nine or something years and she told me that um, it was a false positive for her so that I should get a confirmation and get an upper endoscopy. So I told her I wanted an upper endoscopy. So she referred me to a GI specialist off post. Thank God, because I've been wanting that forever. Like I said, in the emergency room in 2016, I wanted it. So she finally referred me to a GI specialist off post, which I was really, really thankful for. So before I could schedule an appointment with my referral, they had to fax all of my information over to the doctor so they knew who I was, what my issue was, like anything about me, like any of my medication allergies because I have two. And for some reason, they were not doing that. And I was like literally in tears. I was frustrated because I kept going in there. And it's not like a five-minute drive. It's a good 15, 20 minutes to get there. And then like on post traffic and all that. So I was very, very irritated that I had to go in more than once to tell them. Because every time I called the hospital that they referred me to, they didn't know who I was or anything about me. And they would not schedule an appointment with me until they knew who I was. So I went in like three or four times and I told them, I said, you need to fax my information over. And they wouldn't let me do it the hospital that was going to see me would not allow me to fax it. They had to get it from my doctor or the clinic. So I was not able to schedule a consultation appointment until September, like the middle of September. And I was frustrated because this whole time, like, yeah, I was eating gluten-free, but I wanted to know what was going on because even though I was I was on a gluten-free diet like my stomach was still hurting and I didn't understand why. So finally when I got my consultation I met up with my doctor and my husband came with me and he told me that gluten takes three months to leave your system which I did not know that and so I thought okay maybe it was a false positive because I'm still in pain even though I'm gluten-free but once he told me that I was reassured and everything that I was actually had celiac but that the gluten was still trying to leave my body so then once I met up with my doctor I told him about how my dad has Crohn's as well and I just want a peace of mind that I don't have Crohn's because I was almost at this point I was almost positive that it was no longer Crohn's since I knew that it could potentially be celiac so once I told him that I really wanted to get a colonoscopy. He told me that they would give me a colonoscopy and an upper endoscopy at the same time. So October 23rd of 2017 was when my upper endoscopy and my colonoscopy was. They told me to eat gluten two weeks before my appointment. So October 9th, I started eating gluten. He told me that one piece of bread a day would suffice, but I thought, okay, I'm never going to be able to eat this food again. I might as well take advantage. So my husband and I were going to Taco Bell maybe like three or four times a week. I'm not even joking. And we were not eating gluten-free pasta. We were eating just regular wheat pasta. I got like three or four Little Caesars pizzas because my husband had his party and I got pizzas. So I had a lot of gluten in my system. And during that time, like, I was completely fine. Like, I wasn't getting any pain or anything. And so I thought, what is going on if it's not celiac? I thought maybe that it was a false positive because I was eating all this gluten, like a bunch of gluten, and I was completely fine. I didn't feel any pain ever, hardly. So my appointment for my colonoscopy and my upper endoscopy come around and obviously I was not able to drive myself there or drive back so my husband was with me thank god because I was nervous that he that the army wouldn't let him leave and I would have to find someone else 
And I had never been under anesthesia before, so I didn't know what to expect. It was very, very nerve-wracking. But when I woke up, they told me that the colonoscopy was fine and the upper endoscopy was abnormal. And I guess at the time they didn't know, which I thought I would get my results right away because it's literally a camera going down your throat. But I guess they had to send it to someone, like a specialist to look at or whatever. And so um, two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks after that, I got a call from my doctor and he told me that I had 100% had celiac disease and that my intestines were jacked like they're very bad because of all the gluten that I was eating before I knew that it was celiac because like I said I had been in pain and I didn't know what it was and I was not informed about celiac or not educated about it at all and so I just let it go I just dealt with the pain for like I don't know nine ten months and so I always grew up with the kind of mindset like oh I can eat whatever I want I don't have to worry about anything but now obviously my whole life has changed because of this disease but I had plans to join the military and I had talked to during this time when I was waiting to go to see this doctor I had talked to two or three recruiters for the Air Force on the phone and I had done my research and I was basically like going to the gym every day to be fit for like a PT test or whatever. But now that I have celiac, obviously I cannot join the military and I'm very, very upset about it. And I still think about it a lot, but I guess you just got to deal with what happens with what the world hands you. But how I'm doing now is I'm okay. I'm still trying to make my peace with it. It's very hard to stick to a gluten-free diet when your husband doesn't have celiac. And don't get me wrong, he is very, very supportive of celiac. He was very supportive when his mom had celiac. However, he does not like gluten-free bread. And so when I make his lunches, he has regular bread. And so then I have to worry about cross-contamination. So I always have to make sure my kitchen is bleached down before I make any food to kill any bacteria of cross-contamination. I don't have a second toaster for me. Because if I put his bread in the toaster, I can't put my bread in the toaster because then it's cross-contamination. So I guess the hardest part about having celiac is the fact that I have to worry about cross-contamination. I just recently had my first gluten-free Thanksgiving and honestly gluten-free food and regular food tastes exactly the same at least in my opinion and my husband says the same thing like gluten-free pasta tastes the same gluten-free bread there's a slight difference obviously like I can taste it too and I wasn't I wasn't really eating a bunch of bread anyway so the only time I eat bread is if it's toast like I don't make sandwiches that much but Cross-contamination is probably the hardest thing I'm, I'm dealing with right now. I was gluten somewhere on Thursday for Thanksgiving because Friday night and Saturday morning I was in a lot of pain and it was the worst pain I had ever been in. Like they're sharp lower abdominal pains and I'm not sure if I was glutened on Thursday or if it's just the gluten I've been eating trying to leave my body. But I joined a bunch of Facebook groups for celiac disease and like awareness and support groups and they have helped me a lot. I downloaded the app called Gluten Free Scanner. If you're not sure if there's gluten in a food item at the grocery store, you scan the barcode and it tells you right there that there's no gluten in that product which is really nice because even if a product says it is gluten free that does not mean it is gluten free where do they make the product do they make the product away from all the other products that they make that aren't gluten free or do they make it on the same place where they make the gluten food because if they do that then you can't eat it because it's cross-contamination and I've noticed in these groups that there's a lot of people that are more prone to gluten than I am. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that correctly, but what I mean is 
I just get really, really sharp, excruciating pains in my abdomen. But other people, they break out in hives. They break out on their, on like, just like really bad acne. Some people lose their hair. Like, I have not experienced that, thank God, because I would cry if I started losing my hair. Even though the sharp pains are very, very excruciating, I'm fortunate that that's all I've been experiencing. So that was my story on my diagnosis and how I'm doing. I hope that this has helped someone out there who's been recently diagnosed or has been diagnosed for a while but just wanted to watch some stories about other people because like I said everyone's different. So if you want to see my favorite gluten-free snacks just give this video a thumbs up and I can make that for you. Okay thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!